Hello and very warm good evening to all my audience nationally and internationally. In uh, this short video, once again, I'm going to record another uh, poem and discussion and critical comments on uh, Derek Walcott's poem. This is going to be the last of the poems included in the syllabus of post-colonial literature. It's being done for the benefit of my students of post-colonial literature everywhere. Uh, this is the third poem of Derek Walcott. Uh, so it's not necessary to introduce Derek Walcott to my students, but still I would say certain things about uh, about this poem, uh, uh, about Derek Walcott as well. So let me introduce to you people the uh, kind of poem title that I've got here, and that's going to be here after the storm. So you can see that the title is quite unusual in the same way as there was the title The Fist and Far Cry from Africa, so this one is again going to be a type of one your title. So, so such are the things recorded and said by Derek Walcott to fit. And let me take you to the next view. I mean, uh, here after uh, the storm, I'm going to have a little bit of the introduction of Derek Walcott. Uh, as the picture is showing, he's a very uh, good personality and well-defined man. He's, he's been the teacher and the playwright as well. Uh, his drama is very famous. That is uh, Dream on Monkey Mountain. And then he has been writing lots of poets, poetry poems as well, and so poets and artist. He's a Nobel Prize winner, and uh, one of the important thing about him is that he was born in Saint Lucia in the British West Indies, and then uh, he has two races in his ancestry. It's a mixed racial person. He was both white and black, as he had the grandparents like that. And then uh, he's the one who's divided in his roots also. And this very thing provides the material for his writing of the poetry. So that is all about the introduction of this man. And uh, now, of course, I shall be uh, moving on towards the poem, uh, this, uh, the, After the Storm. The title, you know, is very fascinating. It says the, uh, the title says that something which has happened after the storm. It means that just like the novel of Muhammad, Exit West, the uh, process and the moment of migration is not described. The moment is described when the migration has taken place uh, in, in the novel Exit West by Muslim Hamid. In the same way, this poem also does not discuss what was happening during the storm, what was the death and killing taking place or the destruction was happening during the storm. It begins right after the moment when the storm has stopped. So that is why the title is going to be significant in that way. So let us have a little bit of entering into the text of the poem and see how much we can talk about this poem. Uh, you see, the very first thing uh, is that I have divided the poem into uh, one, two, three parts so that we can have an easy understanding. So the first part that I have here is, uh, or can be read like that, there are so many islands, as many islands as the stars at night, on that branch tree from which meteors are shaken like falling fruit around the schooner flight, but things must fall, and so it always was, on one hand Venus, on the other hand Mars, fall and are one, just as this earth is one, island in archipelagos of uh, stars. Now you see, this is the introduction of the poem, or the first part of the poem, as this uh, picture is also showing something to us that here, uh, you know, the, these Venus or the Mars are uh, made visible and then the same picture, lots of stars are being talked about, the poet is talking about the same thing. For example, he says, there are so many islands, as many islands as the stars of night. So that is that can be taken on the literal sense by thinking that in this world, there are lots of islands here and there, and these islands are uncountable and very large in number, and this number can be compared with the stars of night. In the same way, as in the poem Daffodils, the, the poet Wordsworth compares the number of daffodils in order to highlight the number of these daffodils, he would talk about the, uh, you know, long line of stars in the sky. Uh, in the same way, we have here the kind of description of the stars, as are the stars, as are the islands. This is a little bit of exaggeration because uh, the stars are so many and the islands are, are not that many. But still, in order to highlight the number, this, this image has been used to make us understand that islands are too many there. Uh, but these stars can also be taken as the islands because these are the stars that the human being have been looking at and as a result they have the kind of introduction and recognition of different stars and that is why it can be taken in that way as well. That is why the poet says that on that branched tree from which meteors are shaken like falling fruit around the schooner's flight, 
So uh, this can be now understood very well that the poet also means to understand us that the stars which are present in the sky, these stars are also just like the, you know, uh, flights, just like the uh, islands, these stars can be taken. And he says that the sky is going to be a type of tree around which these stars are present. And sometimes the stars shoot down. And so he says that uh, stars continue to shoot down from that very tree in the same way as some fruit may fall from when, for example, the ship is moving, schooner is moving. At that time, it's a possibility that some something may fall because of the movement and something may come down in the same way. He says that uh, these things are going on. And this thing can also be traced because of the imagery which the poet is creating that it is the sea time on which the ship is moving and that ship is moving under the starry night and when the star shoots down it appears as if this star is coming towards the that ship one as well. So in this way very beautiful imagery is constructed by the poet by presenting these lines to us that there are so many islands, as many islands as the stars at night on that branch tree from which meteors are shaken like falling fruit from the schooner flight. And the poet continues with the same way by saying that, but things must fall, and so it always was. On one hand, Venus, on the other, Mars, fall, and are one just as this Earth is one, island in archipelagos of the stars. This is something, here, here uh, we, we need to understand, that the poet is trying to give some everlasting touch to this situation. That when uh, people were in the past time, for example, not that civilized, not that scientifically advanced even at that time, these things, he says, used to be happening. Uh, from the very beginning, at any time, at any moment, if somebody was traveling on the sea, that person could see these stars falling down. That person could see that in the sky, some of the stars are moving, some of the stars are coming here and there, and the movement and the position is changing in the same way, he says that even today, these things are happening. Uh, the, the falling kind of situation that is also present. He says that as the earth is the star in the same way, the others are also the star. So it means that he's talking about the universe and he's talking about the things which are present in the universe and they have been present all the time. They're not missing at all. They were there all the time and they can be there as well. For example, the poet again, let us see, says that far and are one. According to the poet, these things are one. They are the part of the one. Just as this earth is one island in archipelagos of star, he says the islands are everywhere in the same way as the whole universe, if it is taken as the kind of sea or the ocean, then our earth is going to be one island on this, on this ocean. In the same way, in the starry night, all these stars which are visible to us, they are really like the uh, islands in this vast ocean of the universe. So in that way, the poet has generalized his small boat where he's present in the on the sea and is looking at the star is trying to link himself trying to extend himself to upward towards the general body of the ocean like thing cosmic ocean like thing in which every star is floating just like the islands so he says that he is also on the earth on one island as there are so many other islands in the sky he says that this thing has been happening all the time this thing uh, uh, was never stopped it has been going on the same way as it is going on on that day when the poem is being written so in this way uh, there's a lot of uh, complexity to be understood by the reader when he comes to this type of poem let us see what he further says in his uh, next part which has been divided by me for example uh, here we have the next part storm after the storm two it's just three lines i've chosen my first friend was the sea now is my last I stop talking now, I work, then I read, coaching under a lantern hook to the mast. Now, this is the sea uh, with, on which the boat is traveling. The poet says that for him, boat, sea, and the water of the sea is not a new kind of thing. According to him, this uh, he is very expert in that, and he has been you know, traveling by that, and they're spending a lot of time on that also. According to him, uh, he has been thinking a lot. He has been trying to talk about a lot. He says that now the time has come that he should stop for some time and there he should sit under the lantern and read some book as well. Now that uh, goes to show that perhaps he was busy, perhaps he was trying to save his boat when the storm was going on and now the storm has stopped and as a result, poet has got the chance to take rest for some time and sit peacefully under the lantern which is hanging on the mast of the sea and this goes to show the point where the storm is, has gone. Now it is the calm and peaceful situation and the poet is present there. So in this way, first of all, the poet highlights and links up 
himself with the whole of the universe by saying that his earth is an island in the ocean of the cosmos as in the as in the way on the earth we have number of islands in on on the oceans of the world and secondly he immediately retracts back to his own self where he himself becomes just one small particle just one thing of the universe and there he is trying to uh, make himself understand that the uh, that he is now peaceful and he wants to read by sitting on so his own word through this image is being constructed that he is present the vast sea his ocean and his plane his ship is present there and in that ship he is present just sitting under the mast and trying to read some book as well so in that way the poet is just going upward and linking himself with the universe and after that he's coming down and is constructing his own universe within himself as well so in this way the poem carries complexity which needs to be understood very well now let's see what further the poet has said in the uh, second and the third and the last part now the poet says i try to forget what happiness was and when that don't work i study the stars now the reader almost is baffled because the first part of the poem does not talk about this thing and all of a sudden the poet begins something new by saying that he uh, says that no happiness cannot be present in his life he says that he he has been trying to forget what happiness was and then he becomes sad and upset and after that he begins to study the stars he begins to look at the stars sometimes is just me and the soft caesared foam he says that his loneliness is permanent and is present on the sea on his ship and according to him uh, it, it appears to him that he has been for a very long time all alone on the sea where the white foam of the sea is present as the deck turn white and the moon open a cloud like a door he says that he looks at the stars and thinks that the moon is shining also light of the moon white light of the moon is there and according to him this white very light opens one door door for him through a cloud and the light over me is a road in white moonlight taking me home he thinks that perhaps through that white light he will be able to go home uh, there uh, under the moonlight he will be traveling and going to home shabin sang to you from the depths of the sea and he thinks that he is uh, trying to understand the song which is present in the sea which is coming from the depth of the sea now shabin is a person who is a mixed race person and who has been quite uh, popular in the folklore that it's a kind of woman who's got the white blood in her as well and the non white blood is when ultimately she's a combination of all that some people joked at that but she would sing the songs which would reflect her combination her personality of the both the words of the white word and that of the non white word so he says that he thinks that sometime it is possible for him to go home also under that moonlight now this uh, last part of the poem is very interesting that in this part the poet is suggesting to the reader that his loneliness possibly is present and he cannot get rid of that because he is traveling on the sea it's a very big sea and then the uh, oceans are there he needs to reach there but then his travel is long one he cannot stop it uh, storms come and storms resist and uh, storms go away after that there is a peacefulness and calmness also but during those calmnesses the poet says he is able to discover something and that is the moonlight it is so beautiful a moonlight white light that he is able to travel through this moonlight and think about reaching his home no in his imagination he is able to think of reaching his home while he is present on the sea through this moonlight he thinks of reaching the home and he remembers his home he misses his home uh, this thing strikes him that possibly one day he will be able to reach there in that way it's a very important thing to understand what are the feelings of a person who is present on the sea and unable to return home but the wish of his returning home is also very much present there but the imagery is really very beautiful through which the poet has invented the way a uh, type of cognitive migration from the sea or, or, or by by traveling on the rays of moon and the white light of the moon and trying to reach there and thinking of the song being sung by shabin so in this way uh, the poet has shown and reflected something about the life of an adventurer who is going on the sea he faces different situations storms are there sometime and sometime the storms are not there sometime peacefulness is there but during all this situation the poet the traveler the adventurer is able to remember what he has been doing and then what his wishes are definitely wants to reach his home and because of these wishes he he just can think that he can travel through the beautiful white light of the moon and reach his home as well so in that way though the poem ends but it leaves a large mark on the mind of the reader by thinking how one feels loneliness and how that loneliness makes us feel think about our home and reach our home through whatever means are available and here the most beautiful means is the moonlight the white moonlight and let's now further have a little bit of discussion on the poem 
because uh, the poem has ended, some of the discussion may take place with respect to the styles of the poem. For example, if we try to see what is the rhyme scheme, it's really very difficult to find the rhyme scheme, rhyme scheme of the poem because if you look at the lines, for example, there is no particular rhyme scheme coming in our mind. But still, if you want, we can have a little bit of rhyme scheme everywhere. And according to uh, my analysis, the rhyme scheme can be like that. As it is written, A, B, C, B, A, A, C, A, B. It's a type of rhyme scheme we can make. Uh, but possibly a regular rhyme scheme is not present in the poem. And then the poem is having stanza length. It's a full one stanza poem. Not having the stanzas of four line or other type of lines. It's having full one stanza. And that contains 18 lines in it. It is having iambic pentameter because uh, there is the pentameter used by the poet. I mean, five meters per line have been used, which is necessary for making a blank verse. And that is why it is the kind of blank verse we are having. In the very image which is present in the slide, the students can notice the definition of blank verse also. It says that poetry written in unrhymed iambic pentameter lines. So the poem is pentameter, uh, iambic pentameter and is a blank verse. It can resemble very close to a sonnet because sonnet has 14 lines and here we have 18 lines but is written the same way as the sonnets most of the time are written. So this is the sum of the technical analysis. One more technical analysis we can have a type of discussion as the picture goes to show everybody is thinking. Uh, amount of the stanza in the poem is only one. Average number of symbols per stanza is 770. Average number of words per stanza is 151. Amount of lines is 18 total. Average number of symbols per line is 42. And in that way, average number of words per line is 8 sometime. And mood of the speaker is, you know, normal. It is sad mood at that time when he misses the home. Then comes some of the punctuation marks in the poem. But the punctuation marks do not create any dominating effect. The poet has used some of the repetitive sounds as well. For example, one, I, and, these are some of the repetitive sounds. Otherwise, no, no repetitive uh, sounds are created in that way as sometimes there's a big alliteration and assonance and consonance in some of the poems. So this is some of the technical it's discussion. Hours. We do have a conclusion here. The poem is very simple, but it creates a complex situational as well. And at that time, especially when the poet relates himself with the kind of universe and tries to construct his own universe at a very small level, same is the case uh, with the double image of the poem that there is a there is an impending death that possibly can come to uh, the traveler at any time. He has got the wish to die and then he's got the wish to live as well. When the storm is there at that time, the wish to die is present. And when the storm goes away, the wish to live is present, especially in the ending portion of the poem when the poet says that he needs to go back his home and he needs to feel that Shibane is singing and he will be there in that way the wish of living is also present. So the things are two way discussed in the poem. Let us see, there can be some other part of the poem also where two ways present. For example, uh, largeness has been unfolded into the smallness of the world of the poet or that of the traveler. And that singleness, smallness has been exported towards this universe by declaring that the stars are the islands and the universe is a big ocean. And then three things happen in the poem all, the, all, of, all, all together. It says that nature is also there, wish of survival is also there, and under all this what we, the, what we are experiencing, what the reader is experiencing, what the poet makes us experience is the looming death all the time. Then the importance of journeys has been shown that very good way of living in the past time used to be the journeys. The journeys could be the uh, ocean and sea journey, it could be the land journey, but most of the time journeys were there. And these journeys were made by some of the adventurers. These adventurers moved about here and there and they were responsible for the discovery of new and important lands. You see, there is the lots of images traced by the poet and the symbols also. This type of sea journey, this type of thing which uh, because of the sea, because of the image of the ship, because of the time of the night and that of the stars and accord, uh, accordingly we have the beauty of the moonlight as well and relating man with the universe all has constructed this poem back to the Greek ages as at that time the, the stories of the people who traveled on the sea and made new discoveries and sometimes they just travel for the sake of adventure that has been revived by the poet. So this is the revival of the poetry of the past time as well. This is what the poet has done in this in this very short poem. So after the storm is really very interesting poem. The message is very simple and we can reach the distant crux of the poem very easily. It's not difficult in that way. So the message of the poet has reached to us in a, in a clear cut way. 
themes of the poem, poem are nature, for example, man's efforts and desire to live and the problems which he goes to face. And these problems make him imaginatively survive and think of the beautiful things that is also present in the poem. And so we are revived, we are reminded of the past times when the people used to travel on the sea and they used to face certain difficulties and with hardships they could survive and ultimately felt very happy. And especially at that time when they thought of the homes which, to which they will be returning. This is a really very beautiful poem by Derek Walcott and I think everybody has understood something out of it. Uh, though I tried my best but there could be some still spaces to be explained and to be corrected as well. Hopefully when my students will watch this and they may be suggesting something uh, on, on my YouTube channel by giving a comment. So if you have enjoyed the poem, do not fail to hit the subscribe button and this is the time to say goodbye. No hope to see you in some other poem. So that's it from me for this day. Hope to see you again.